Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube, dripping with that BDE. That's everyone's favorite joke, Big Dad Energy. If you've recently accepted that cargo shorts have been replaced by short shorts as the new dad short of choice, then go ahead and hit that like button. I'm David, and today we're gonna be comparing dots commonly used in competition, but they flex into a lot of the things. Basically, it's big window dots. Some people are using these dots for concealed carry, but based on the housing geometry, I probably wouldn't since they're not the most robust. Even the most robust offering can crack glass pretty easily but we'll be talking about the SRO, the Romeo 3 Max, and the Seymour RTS2 V5. And the V5 is important because these chips in these dots are constantly getting updated and so your buddy who broke a bunch of these like five years ago or three years ago or even heck two years ago, all that information may not be valid since they're updating the electronics and the welds and all that stuff in these dots pretty regularly to the point where they're starting to be a lot of these things in the wild and a lot of them are working. If you are a CZ and potentially a Tanfo shooter, Tanfo doesn't seem to be quite as hard on optics as CZ, but CZs are notoriously hard on optics. There's really only one choice for you right now and that is the Trigicon SRO, but there's a lot of Beretta shooters and a lot of other people who have had good luck with the other optics mentioned, and that's gonna actually create a choice for those of you who are shooting other guns. So let's take a look at the features, some of the things that I consider important, some of the things you say that's not important at all, and that's fine, but everybody is going to have a different preference in this regard, so let's go through mine. First and foremost is the physical housing size. This is gonna take the form of the window that rides on top of the optic as well as the front to back dimension, the top of slide to top of optic dimension, all those things we'll discuss. So the SRO has the most round of the windows currently being discussed, which we'll put a pin in that because there is, in my opinion, a shape of window that makes more sense than a totally round one. But the window is totally round. It has the longest dimension front to back, and that's not at the base of the optic where it's the same length as an RMR, so it fits RMR cuts. But because they needed to step it out, the front of the optic does overhang a good bit, and that causes ejection issues on some guns. If the cowl of the SRO hangs past the breech face, there's a good chance you're gonna trap brass and cause malfunctions. Of the optics being considered, the thickness of the body is the slimmest, and that's nice for people who are new to the dot game. Having dots that ride lower to the top of the slide, like traditional iron sights, helps people adopt it. But once you have a good index and understand how to shoot a dot gun, that really doesn't matter. Next is the Romeo 3 Max. Now this dot is one of the dots on my competition guns. I think that this dot's housing size is actually pretty well set up. It has the largest window, but it's not a perfectly round window. It's basically, if you were to come about 10% past the midline of a circle and then just kind of cut it off, that's the shape of the Romeo Max dot. The housing is very long. It is an RTS footprint site, so it shares mounting solutions with the Seymour. The housing is pretty tall from bottom to top, so the dot does ride a fair amount over the slide. And to that point, it'd be difficult to co-witness any iron sights with a dot like this. Finally, the RTS-2 has a similar dimension, slightly taller thickness coming up off the mount, but a roughly similar size, maybe the shortest front to back dimension. The window is basically the same shape as the Max, but the glass area isn't quite as large. So that's the difference in the window housings. Now there is, in my opinion, a more optimum shape, and it's not the SRO shape. It is the shape that the Maxes and the RTSs have, which is the larger, flatter bottom. When you lose a dot, usually when you're shooting fast, it's a little bit low and off the window, and since the bottom of the window is wider on both of those sites, it's easier to recover the dot or potentially not even lose it because the bottom of the window is so much thicker, whereas on the SRO, it's more like this. It's more like this on like the Max. Based off the window size alone, I would prefer the Max or the RTS too because it gives you more usable glass. Next is moving on to reticles. Now reticles is one area where I feel like competition dots for specifically pistols have a lot of room to innovate and evolve. The red dot thing is kind of like, well, this worked on rifles and then we took this rifle sight and scabbed it onto pistols. It'd be really cool if somebody researched pistol optics and like what makes the most sense and started seeing some innovation there. The, the ACSS reticle is barking up the right tree, but I think that there's still territory to be gained in that regard. So the reticles that are offered on the 
SRO is basically military veteran dude bro stuff. It's the one, two and a half, and five MOA options on a serious use competition pistol. Unless you have really bad astigmatism, the only choice really is the five MOA dot. Despite being a purpose-built competition site from Trigicon, they didn't include larger dot sizes. It's like they didn't even talk to anybody who's actually winning matches. And this is one of those things where like everybody argues their preference because that's what they thought they wanted and then bought. I'm in the fortunate position where I have tried all the different dot sizes and I can tell you emphatically the larger dots work better for me. Now, while we're talking about reticles on the SRO, the SRO gets plenty bright. The glass on the optic has a bit of a warping fish eye effect, but it doesn't really matter as far as pistol shooting is concerned. Longer distances on rifles and stuff like that, it's going to create a problem. The Max, wearing Max Michelle's name, is available in a three and a six MOA dot with six being the most prevalent and honestly would be my recommendation. Again, unless you have a crazy astigmatism. The six MOA dot gets super bright, so it keeps up with a bright day, no problem. The glass on the Max site is probably the cleanest. The dot shows up the least distorted when I don't put in my contacts and have uncorrected vision. But the Seymour RTS2, which has a background in competition shooting, actually offers their dot size in basically increments of two. You can get pretty much any dot size you would want from two all the way up to 10. Now the glass is also super clean. The emitter is very clean as well. I would rank this probably number two as far as the dot cleanliness is concerned, but the brightness has more of a uh, usable range where the dimmest setting on the RTS is going to be significantly brighter than the dimmest setting on either of the other two. The RTS is truly a sight that is specifically for pistol competition. And to that point, since I find myself in the fortunate position to be able to evaluate these kinds of things, I actually have a 10 MOA dot on the Tanfo and an eight MOA dot on this Beretta here. And I have to say that of all the reticle sizes, I think the 10 MOA is probably the best for practical shooting purposes. Now, a lot of you in the comments are immediately gonna flip out and be like, well, how am I supposed to shoot at 100 yards? Well, the reality is that nobody really shoots pistols at 100 yards in a practical context. And even if you did, a 10 MOA circle is taking up 10 inches on a target, and it's going to provide a better indication of central tendency for your shots, since you're gonna have to center the larger dot on the target. You can make shots at 100 yards with a 10 MOA dot, I've done it. Similarly, at 25 yards, I was able to put up sub two inch groups with the 10 MOA dot. It doesn't matter as much as everybody seems to want it to. But what the larger dots do well is they give you a better read of where your dot is on target. It's easier to stay target focused and observe where the dot is, which is why I say the larger dots are more usable. Now, how the dots actually look when side by side by side by side. I took this video, which doesn't really tell the tale, but just to kind of narrate what it looks like to you, the uh, five MOA clearly appears the smallest from Trigicon, and I agree that the six MOA from SIG does appear about 20% larger, which is what the difference between between five and six MOA would be. From six going up to eight, again, it does look to be about a 25, you could call it maybe 30% increase in dot size. And similarly, again, it's about a 20% increase going larger. That said, the Tim MOA dot is still a little bit thinner than a typical front sight thickness, so there's that. Should you base your decision on what dot size is available? No, but having options available to use better. But hey, Sig, I would love to see an eight or 10 MOA option in the max. As far as whose reticles are the cleanest, if you have an astigmatism, at least to my astigmatism, the cleanest reticle by far is the max, and that's probably due to the fact that it has the most usable range for adjustment. So sitting in here where it's kind of dark in this room, I can get it to look almost like a clean circle. Following on to that is the probably the RTS. It has a less wide range of adjustment. So in here, I have to like point it at the lights to get it to clean up and be a clean circle. But there's a slight haze around the edges. It doesn't particularly starburst. And the one that aggravates my astigmatism the most, and it's still not bad, is the SRO, but it has a wide range. It just this one distorts the most. It starbursts the worst out of all the dots available to me. I like the cleaner looking sight, but really even the starbursting isn't so bad. It doesn't bother me that much. And finally, the prices that you can find these optics currently available for will go from lowest to highest. The RTS2 currently has the lowest price of about $400 in the fourth quarter of 2022 as I record this. Moving up from there, the 
SRO is, if you look, you can find them for closer to 500 bucks. And finally, the Max generally has the highest price. Now I purchased for my open gun, uh, Max to use on it, and I got one of the demo or blims, or I don't remember what, but if you shop around, you can find like factory seconds or whatever. I got one for 450, but these are generally retailing closer to 500 bucks. And finally, battery access. The SRO probably has my least favorite solution with the battery door on top, but it's like well inside the cowl up here, so getting onto it is a little bit difficult. And you can cross thread the battery cap and the little rings eventually wear out. It's not a major thing. I had to replace my first battery after, you know, two years or so on the SRO, so not so bad. The Max has two screws on the right-hand side of the optic that you would have to loosen to get in at the battery. And similarly, the RTS2 has a battery door, but it pops out just with like a key or something like that. You can pop the battery tray out on the RTS2. So going back to the beginning of the video and showing my work on the dot that I kind of picked before these, and this is the dot I've actually shot the least amount in competition. The SRO I competed with for a full season. The Max I competed with all of last season on my open gun. Not exactly the same application, but so far just based on features, cost, and all that kind of stuff, I kind of prefer the RTS2 right now unless the reliability does become an issue, but so far it hasn't, we'll see on this Beretta. I've got plans to use this in another couple videos, but so far the RTS2 is my pick. And that's largely due to the reticle sizes that are available, the cost, the shape of the window, the cleanness of the dot and glass. There's just a bunch of features going on. But those are basically the options in play right now. Share your experience in the comments. You guys have shot a bunch of rounds on all these different dots, so if you can help some people out, the comments are a great place to do that. Appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.